Okay, good evening to everybody. Just please let me know if you can hear me and if you can hear me well. I hope that you can hear me well and I hope that you can see my screen. So today we are going to talk about IELTS Writing Task 2 and in particular about advantages and disadvantages at sea. So first of all, uh, let us talk about what IELTS Writing Task 2 is. Well, in this type of task, you will be asked to write an essay. Uh, you are advised to spend 40 minutes on this task and write a minimum of 250 words. So uh, some students ask whether there is any difference between general training essay and academic essay. Well, on the one hand, uh, there is no difference, as the structures, the types of the essays, and the scoring is the same. On the other hand, uh, there is uh, some difference between the topics and the questions. As in academic uh, essays, the topics are usually more complicated, and the questions may be um, also more difficult. So you should be prepared for that if you are heading for an academic essay. Uh, what else should you um, should you probably learn about writing task two is that uh, essays in IELTS are completely different from what you have ever been writing before. What I mean is your compositions in Russian language or Ukrainian language or whatever language you wrote them. Yeah? And this is what makes them quite complicated. On the other hand, on the other hand, um, you score more for your IELTS uh, I see then you can score for your writing task one so what I'm talking about is that for your essay you will probably get 60% of your writing marks so that is why uh, it is definitely essential for us to focus on writing essays to know the strategies of writing essays to know how they differ from our school's essays or essays in any other texts uh, any other exams for example. So let us get down to that. Uh, when it comes to assessment, yes, it's, uh, in order to write a good essay, you need to know what uh, or how your essay will be assessed. So basically, there are four criteria. The first one is task response. What is assessed according to task response in your essay? You should write at least 250 words. You should address all parts of the task. You should present a clear position if you are asked about it, of course. I mean, if you are asked about your opinion, you should clearly present your opinion. And you should also develop relevant and well-supported ideas. When it comes to relevant ideas, I mean that you shouldn't get sidetracked. For example, if your essay uh, is about children, I mean, you are asked to write about children and their toys, for example, you shouldn't write about adults or teenagers. Yeah, otherwise, these ideas, uh, no matter how well developed they are, they are completely irrelevant to the topic. Well, uh, what about coherence and cohesion? This means that uh, your ideas should develop logically. Uh, you should use paragraphs and each paragraph should have a clear idea central idea you shouldn't jump from one idea to another within a paragraph well as well as within the essay and you should also use linking devices as these are the ones which help us combine the sentences and uh, develop our ideas in a logical way and actually make our sentences longer what about lexical resource so uh, which is criteria number three uh, your range of vocabulary will be assessed. What does it mean? It means that you should try and uh, present all kinds of vocabulary that you have on particular topic. For example, if your essay is about sports, it means that you should not only use the word sport or to do sports, you should write uh, some kinds of sports that you know, also some verbs 
apart from do sports, for example, warm up, do the pool, uh, do the press ups, for example, or to keep fit uh, or keep as fit as a fiddle. So you know what I mean. Yes, yeah? so you should uh, convince the examiner that you know this topic and you can use the vocabulary of the topic freely. Uh, Another thing about vocabulary is you should avoid repetition. Try to avoid repetition. Of course, there are some words which cannot be replaced. For example, some terms or, well, there are some really, and you can't, you can't avoid repeating them. But there are other words which you can substitute with synonyms. You can also paraphrase the word. You can use another, um, another part of speech, for example, or just paraphrase the sentence, yeah? Then, uh, of course, your word choice will be assessed. And when it comes to word choice, it means that uh, you need to be absolutely sure about the vocabulary that you use and that you use it appropriately. Because sometimes students learn some very complicated or advanced vocabulary. However, they do not know what context it should be applied in. And as a result, they use it inappropriately. And this advanced vocabulary actually doesn't contribute to their score at all. Uh, then spelling, yes, it will be assessed as well. And uh, word formation, well, I have but, um, already mentioned yeah, that you can use it as a way to avoid repetition. And frequency of mistakes. What does that mean? Uh, well, if you use one, if you make a mistake once, I mean, there is some word where you've made a mistake and you used it uh, inappropriately only once, well, Okay, let's say that it's a tiny mistake, yeah? However, if you keep repeating the same word a few times throughout the essay and it's uh, always used inappropriately, then, well, unfortunately, you will be penalized for it. The same goes for grammatical range and accuracy as your frequency of errors also matters a lot here. Uh, also, punctuation, uh, pay a special attention to it as Unfortunately, punctuation rules in Russian and English are completely different. And range of structures. It means that you should use uh, a mixture of simple and complex sentences, and you should use, or at least try to use, complicated, complex grammar. Okay? Then, uh, let us move on to types of essays. Yeah? So, in general, there are five different types of essays which you can come across in your IELTS writing task too. The first type of essay is called opinion essay, and you can identify that this is an opinion essay if you can see such questions as, to what extent do you agree or disagree with? Or, do you agree or disagree with? Another type of essay is discussion essay, which is also quite easily identified as um, the question is, discuss both views and give your opinion. Another type of essay is advantages and disadvantages essay. You can uh, identify this essay by such questions as, what are the advantages and disadvantages of, or do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? Another essay is cause and solution essay. The questions which may help you to spot that this is the type of essay Cause and solution A are what are the causes of this? What solution can you suggest? Or what solutions can you suggest? And uh, the last type of essay is called mixed essay. It means that you will probably have two questions which come from two different essays, which I have already mentioned above. For example, in what ways can has technology affected the types of relationships people make? And has this become a positive or negative development? So as you can see, nothing about discussion, nothing about advantages or disadvantages, agree, disagree, or cause solution, nothing is mentioned. Yeah? However, you have to write a mixed type essay. Well, uh, I have also put it down here at the very end of my page that names can vary because it largely depends on the teacher and all the resources that we can use. For example, opinion essay may be called agree or disagree essay. Uh, a cause and solution essay can be called a problem and solution essay. It actually depends on the question. So if the question is what are the problems or what is the problem, then of course it's a problem and solution essay. And uh, actually, mixed-type essays also sometimes called 
two-part question essay. So you shouldn't get confused if in another source of uh, information you will find another uh, another name of the essay because actual names uh, they vary but the structures do not. Okay. Well, uh, then let's have a look at some steps to follow. You know that in IELTS Writing Task 2, you are given only one hour of time, and within this hour, you have to write two different pieces of writing. Writing Task 1, which is a letter or maybe a description of some diagram if it is an academic module, and Writing Task 2, which is an essay. Uh, in, if your timing is perfect, and uh, it means that you would try to um, spend only 40 minutes. At least you should try to spend only 40 minutes on this type of task. So I suggest some plan which you can follow and uh, meet these requirements. So first of all, read the task carefully and identify the type of the essay, which is extremely important, yeah? Because uh, unless you identify it in the right way, you may end up writing a completely different essay. So however, one minute is always enough for that. Then, you should brainstorm the ideas and write the plan, which may take you about three to five minutes. So, why is it important? And I insist on you writing a plan, as I know that some students do not, and then, unfortunately, it affects their essay uh, quite negatively. So, why do I insist on you writing the plan? The, well, firstly, it's always easier to write so, any piece of writing when you have a plan to follow. Secondly, while brainstorming the ideas and writing your plan, you basically uh, write the essay orally. You already know what you are going to write, how you are going to write it. You pick up an idea, you think about, okay, how am I going to develop this idea? Can I develop the idea or I cannot? Because if you feel that you cannot develop the idea, then well, do not pick it up, okay? Because you will need to explain every single idea you use in your essay. So that is why it is in incredibly important, okay? So uh, the next uh, step is, of course, to write the essay, which should take you about 30 minutes, and then three to five minutes are left for you to check the essay. Well, uh, as I've already told you today, we are going to focus on advantages and disadvantages essay. I would say that there are two types of them, as uh, you have seen that there can be two types of questions. Yeah, the first question can be: Do the what are the advantages and disadvantages? And the second type of essay uh, is: Do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? They are a little bit different in their structure. So today we are going to focus only on the uh, advantages disadvantages essay, which has a quite simple and straightforward question. So let's have a look at the topic. The development of tourism contributed to English becoming the most prominent language in the world. Some people think this will lead to English becoming the only language to be spoken globally. What are the advantages and disadvantages to having one language in the world? So according to our plan, the first thing we do is identify the type of the essay. I have underlined the question as it helps us to identify the type of it. Another step is to write the plan. So let us imagine that this is our plan. We have two advantages and two disadvantages. So while brainstorming my ideas, I think that I can develop two advantages, which are understanding between countries and people and economic growth. And I believe there may be two disadvantages to English being the only language in the world. And these disadvantages are other language and cultures disappear, they die out. And of course, it might lead to collapse of tourism. Then uh, I want to draw your attention to the fact that in this type of essay, you are not asked about your opinion. So if you give your opinion, if you are too personal when writing this essay, you will be penalized. So please do not do it, okay? No personal opinions here. Well, so these are two steps which we have already completed. We have identified the type of the essay, we have written the plan, and now it's time for us to start writing the essay. In order to do that, we need to know the structure. Well, again, structures may vary a little, but basically this is one uh, 
possible structure which you can follow. Our essay should uh, consist of four paragraphs. The first paragraph is called introductory paragraph, which usually consists of two sentences. The first sentence is a background statement, which is a paraphrase of the topic. And the second sentence is a thesis statement, where you write what your essay is going to be about. Body paragraph number one is usually devoted to the advantages, where you explain what uh, you enumerate the advantages and then you explain what uh, advantages they are and why you think that they are uh, benefits actually. In body paragraph number two, you can state that you should state the disadvantages uh, and uh, explain why they are the disadvantages. And in the concluding paragraph, you should summarize the ideas. Uh, I have put it down about giving an example. I've put it down that it's optional as it's really optional. So you uh, can give an example or you can not. So uh, what I mean uh, by saying that you can give an example, well, maybe you want to prove that, you know, some sport makes people fitter and healthier. And you can give either an example from your own experience, yeah, and you can give an example from some studies or researches or articles which you've come across, you've read them, and now you know that according to the latest research conducted by the American University, 70% of people who do sports regularly um, live up to 95 years old, for example. So this is your example, yeah, that I mean the research which you have read, and now you have stated that you have read it, and it actually proves your idea that Sport is incredibly vital for your health and for your lifespan. So, um, but again, it's optional because sometimes uh, you have the right number, I mean, the sufficient number of words, or you have developed your ideas in such a good way that you don't need any examples to prove. That is why it's up to you. Of course, if you have written the essay and you see that it's a little bit short or the number of words is insufficient, it would be a good idea to come back to one of the body paragraphs or to both of them and write some example. Yeah, like make it up or maybe write a true one. Why not? Um, done. It's time for us to start writing our essay. The first uh, part is introductory paragraph and let us start with writing a background statement which is a paraphrase of the topic. So let's once again, uh, once again have a look at the topic. The development of tourism contributed to English becoming the most prominent language in the world. Some people think this will lead to English becoming the only language to be spoken globally. Let us paraphrase the topic. It is a thought by some people that English, which is now the most widely spoken language in the world, may one day predominate over all other languages and result in their eventual disappearance. Let's have a look at how we have paraphrased. I have highlighted the phrases for you to make it simpler. So, um, some people think is paraphrased into it is thought by some people, which is a change from active voice into passive which is really very helpful when it comes to paraphrasing the topic. Lead to is substituted with a synonym result in, and the phrase becoming the only language to be spoken is changed or paraphrased with the words predominate over all other languages and actually result in their eventual disappearance. Mm, it is absolutely forbidden to rewrite the topic. You know, of course you can do it if you had for 4.5 or 5. However, if you had for some high score, please never rewrite uh, the topic, but try to paraphrase it. The next part is a thesis statement, uh, which is the answer to the question. The question in our essay is, what are the advantages and disadvantages to having one language in the world? You can write a thesis statement in two ways. The first one is, Having one language would certainly aid understanding and economic growth, but there would certainly be some drawbacks. What have we done? We have generally mentioned that there may be some drawbacks, and we have already given some information about the advantages we are going to cover in our essay, yeah, which are understanding and economic growth. So this is the one way how you can do it. Another way, which you have also probably seen in some samples essay, is, is 
This essay will elaborate on the benefits and drawbacks of speaking one language worldwide, or this essay will examine, this essay will discuss, and so on. So you may follow either way which uh, appeals to you more and um, the way which you can remember better. Uh, however, I would recommend you to use the first one. The thing is, the second one is uh, sometimes considered by the examiners to be a memorized statement, which is why uh, it uh, will not be assessed. I, I mean that if you just use something that you have memorized, well, what to assess? Only your memory, yeah? So, of course, it's largely depends on the examiner, and they cannot state this, that it may happen like that, but I would recommend you to try and avoid doing it. Yeah, it's not that difficult. If you have already written a plan, it won't be difficult for you to say what kinds of advantages are and then write something like there would certainly be some drawbacks. Yeah, it's not difficult, I, I think, especially if you're heading for seven, for example. So uh, the introductory paragraph now looks like that. It is thought by some people that English, which is now the most widely spoken language in the world, may one day predominate over all other languages and result in their eventual disappearance. Having one language would certainly aid understanding and economic growth, but there would certainly be some drawbacks. Uh -huh. Then, uh, body paragraph number one, which is devoted to advantages. So uh, we have written the plan according to which we have two classes, understanding between countries or people and economic growth. And we remember that the structure of our body paragraph is a topic sentence which presents the advantage, then there should be an explanation of it. Let us see how it is done. One evident benefit to having one global language is that it would enable greater understanding between countries. This is your topic sentence. The topic sentence presents the advantage and you have stated it. Then you should explain. In other words, if everyone spoke one language, there would be complete understanding between not all the countries, but all people throughout the world, which would promote learning, the flow of information and ideas. Then we have two advantages, and the second one is introduced with the help of another reason. Another reason that one language would be advantageous is that it would help economic growth. Explanation. With all people speaking the same language, there would be fewer barriers and therefore trade would flourish between countries, resulting in a healthier world economy. So you can see a topic sentence which is explained, another topic sentence which is explained. Every advantage should be explained. You cannot simply state advantages. You cannot simply enumerate them. You should always explain what you mean, convincing the examiner that this is a real uh, advantage. Next one, body paragraph number two is about disadvantages. On the other hand, there are obvious disadvantages to having only one global language. Firstly, it would mean that all other languages would eventually disappear and along with them, their cultures. The diversity of cultures is one of the joys this world has to offer. Each culture is unique and with its own way of life and own perspectives of the world, which would all be lost if there was only one language. Secondly, it would result in the collapse of tourism because there would be no reason to travel for pleasure and interest if all countries had the same language and similar cultures. This would devastate many countries economically that rely on tourism as a source of income. So please pay your attention to the very first sentence. When you uh, switch from positive to negative, when you switch from benefit to drawbacks, you should use some sentence which, which would show the examiner that now it's high time for you and for her or for him to switch on. Yeah? And it's a kind of a transition, a transition sentence. On the other hand, there are obvious disadvantages to having only one global language. So it's now it's clear to me and to the examiner that you are going to write about minuses. Then I have underlined some cohesive devices which are used to uh, introduce the disadvantages. Yeah, they are firstly and secondly. So uh, please uh, try to not repeat the cohesive devices. So if in the first paragraph we have used one obvious benefit to 
And another reason or another advantage is that in the second body paragraph, you should change them and write something like firstly and secondly. The next thing is our concluding paragraph. So in concluding paragraph, we are to summarize our ideas, yeah? So let's have a look at how it is done. In conclusion, while there are significant advantages to having one language to speak globally, other languages and cultures would die out and many countries' economies would collapse as a result. So one sentence, pretty long one, and I really like that structure, I mean while structure, because it's such uh, conjunctions as while and although, they help us to write a long sentence where we can introduce two opposite views. And here what we do. Uh, another strategy that we have used, if you remember, in our introductory paragraph, we have briefly stated the advantages. Uh, however, we were very general about disadvantages. We only said that, well, there would be some drawbacks. In a concluding paragraph, we change the strategy just vice versa. So here we are very general about our advantages. We only say that there are significant advantages to having one language to speak globally. And then we briefly mention the disadvantages, which wasn't done in the introductory paragraph. Here we do it and we say other languages and cultures would die out and many countries' economies would collapse as a result. Everything is up to the point. Everything has been described in our essay. So we have really summarized the ideas which we have stated. It's very important to never add any new information. Okay, so uh, if uh, at the very end of the essay you are too novice in the exam or, uh, and, or maybe you are too lucky to have one more idea which you can say it to be brilliant, oh, please never do it. Never use it. Never add it to your concluding paragraph, okay? Well, um, that is it about our, con our advantages and disadvantages essay. I hope that everything is clear to you in terms of how it should be written, what structure uh, of this essay is how you should follow it, how you should develop the ideas. However, if you do have any questions, well, you're welcome to write them. And at the end of the stream, I will gladly answer them. And uh, for now, I'd like to introduce some vocabulary that may help you paraphrase, uh, especially when it comes to this type of essay. So these are some synonyms to the word advantage. So instead of the word advantage, you may write a benefit, a positive aspect of something, or an upside of something. Uh, you can write it is beneficial, or it is advantageous, or instead of it, of course, you may use uh, some particular subject, for example, uh, doing sport regularly is advantageous, yeah, or doing unpaid work is beneficial for children, and so on. Uh, then, disadvantages. Uh, you may substitute this word with such words as a drawback, a negative aspect of, and a downside of. Uh, you can also describe advantages and disadvantages. You know, every time when you use some beautiful adjectives or beautiful adverbs, you're, well, first of all, you sound more advanced, you sound more beautifully, and um, that is why I would recommend you to remember at least some of these adjectives, which you can see in the third column and make use of them every time when you write this type of essay. So they can be major advantage or serious, obvious, significant, considerable, main or minor. Okay. Then the next thing I'd like to share with you uh, is linking devices, which may help you combine the sentences logically. So uh, since our essay is advantages in, and disadvantages, it means that we contrast the ideas. We present the op opposing ideas, opposing views, yeah? So you need to know some phrases or some linking devices of contrast. And they are, on the other hand, however, nevertheless, having said that, still, in contrast, conversely, alternatively, or on the contrary, they are especially useful at the beginning of your second paragraph when you switch on to something negative. Then uh, some phrases and uh, linking devices which you can use in order to link ideas, maybe inside the paragraph as well. They are another point to consider, another point to take into consideration. 
regarding what is more in addition furthermore moreover well actually the list is much longer and i'm sure that if you have ever tried to write an essay or if you are searching for some information on linking devices you have already seen those that huge list yeah however once again i i think that it's quite difficult to remember first of that all of them firstly and secondly you won't need to use all of them as for example in advantages and disadvantages i see you will probably present only two maximum three advantages and two maximum three disadvantages which means that you basically need only two linking ideas yeah as the first one will be presented with probably firstly or first uh, to begin with or one of the benefits and so on then uh, if you want to give some examples or if you just want um, I mean some particular examples or if you just want to explain the situation uh, uh, you can use such phrases as for instance or for example which are very common so if you want to vary your vocabulary in terms of examples you may say something like or write something like as an illustration to exemplify in particular or particularly. Well, and uh, closer to the end of our streaming, uh, I'd like to pay your attention to the fact that files, essays, as any essays in any exam, are formal writing, which means that you should know some particular rules what a formal writing is and what you should and what you shouldn't do. So on the left, you can see formal style recommendations. Yeah? So firstly, of course, you need to use academic words. You should use longer sentences. Uh, don't forget that there should be a mixture of simple and long sentences. And you know, when I say that you should use longer sentences, I don't mean that you need to write one sentence, which is practically the whole paragraph or which is half of the paragraph. Because usually, um, they, first, they are unnatural. Secondly, uh, there are students usually end up making mistakes in such long sentences. And thirdly, and most importantly probably, is that when you read or when you write such a long essay which takes three or four lines, when you come to an end of this essay, you actually forget what you started with. And me as a teacher, when I check such essays, of course I try to grasp the idea and I'm peering into details and trying to understand, to rearrange the sentence and so on. However, when it comes to the exam, uh, the examiner doesn't have as much time, you know, to peer into the details of your four-line sentence, which is why he or she would probably not do it. And that is why, please, do not write too bulky sentences, okay? Uh, then, uh, how you can make your sentence longer? You can use some subordinate clauses. Uh, these are the clauses which are um, when, when you have two two simple sentences which are connected with the help of a subordinate conjunction. Uh, some subordinate conjunctions are until, as, since, because, although, despite, while, whereas, if, etc. Actually, the, the list is quite long, So, but these are great things for us to make our sentences longer. Then, uh, let's talk about something that you shouldn't do when writing a formal piece of writing. Please avoid using contractions. Avoid get or get phrases, as get is uh, informal words, and all the phrases with get are also informal. So when it, if you write an essay and then you re, you reread it and you see the word get, please substitute it with receive, buy, obtain, whatever the context requires. Okay. Then avoid using phrasal verbs and uh, avoid using idioms, metaphors, proverbs, and quotes. Avoid being too emotional, as actually, and if people use uh, metaphors, proverbs, and quotes, they are emotional. So please do not do that. Uh, although I probably must say a few words about idioms and phrasal verbs, as yeah, mostly they are informal parts, of not part of speech. Okay, maybe parts of speech. Yeah, they are informal language. Let's put it like that. They are informal language. However, there are some phrasal verbs which are uh, formal. And you can use them in uh, formal writing. For example, carry out or resort to. Yeah, they are formal. Uh, so what I would recommend you is um, when you are just studying to write essays, when you are writing them at home, when you write some phrasal verb or some idiom, 
and you are not sure if it is uh, in formal or whether it is formal, please go to some online dictionary and check it. And if you see that this phrasal verb is formal, then of course you can write it and please do write it. However, if you see that it is informal, forget about it forever, at least until you write, <laughs> uh, until you write a personal letter where it is okay to do it. But in essays, no, no informal language. And the last thing you should avoid in formal style is avoid absolute statements by introducing probabil probability and possibility. So what I mean is you shouldn't sound radical. And uh, an absolute statement is when you say, hmm, if you eat too much chocolate, you will gain weight. Well, probably I will and maybe I will not. Yeah, how do you know it? Or if you write something like that, hmm, a lot of people in America, a lot of teenagers in America, suffer from obesity as a result of eating junk food. Well, I wouldn't be that sure. Maybe they suffer from obesity as a result of some diseases. And maybe there are some people in America who eat a lot of junk food, but they do not put on weight and they do not suffer from obesity. Yeah? So this is what I mean by saying absolute statements. So please, uh, you can make your sentence more polite or a little weaker if you say they will probably or they are likely to suffer. They tend to suffer. Okay, something like that. So um, actually that is all about formal style. And now some final recommendations as a conclusion of everything that we have studied today. Well, first of all, remember to write a plan. Then write at least 250 words. And now I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that you are not penalized if you write more than 250 words and there are actually very nice and high band essays where the number of words is 280 or 300 or even 320 and so you can actually do it if you have enough time and you have such a good command of english However, be careful as the longer the essay uh, the more mistakes you may end up doing yeah and secondly Mm, the essay with such a big number of words would be absolutely fine if every idea, every sentence in this essay is up to the point. Because uh, if the essays are just repeat, uh, are used to repeat the ideas, you know, to show the examiner that you can write 300 words, oh no, that won't help you. Okay? And I would also like to draw your attention to what may happen if you write less. So if you write fewer than 230 words, you will be taken one band from your score. If you write fewer than 200 words, you will be penalized by two bands. Okay, so please try to write 250 or it is even better if you write 270 or 280 words. Then uh, when it comes to word count, yeah, so you know, how many words you have to write. So should you count them or should you not? I would recommend you to not do it in the exam. Okay, so uh, how can you then know for sure that the number of words that you have written in your exam essay is sufficient? Uh, first of all, if you are taking a computer-based exam, nothing to worry about. As in a computer-based exam, your words are counted for you and while writing an essay, you see at the bottom of the page how many words you have already written. If you are taking a paper-based exam, please use a sample answer sheet when getting prepared. Because if you are using the same sample answer sheet at home, where you have enough time to count, so at home you may count as many times as you want, and then you already know how much space it takes you to write 150 words for general task one or academic task one, or how much time it takes you to write 250 words or 280 words. In this way, if you practice doing it using a sample answer sheet, you will not need to count your words in the exam and another thing why it is a bad idea well obviously you understand you are short of time in the exam no time to count the words and another bad uh, thing which may happen to you if you start counting the words after every single paragraph um, it means that you may lose the idea you may lose the track of what you've been writing and it may affect the content of your essay 
So please use sample answer sheets if you're taking paper-based files, and then you will not need to count any words in the exam and be sure that the number of your words is absolutely sufficient and you have nothing to worry about. Then, uh, you should paraphrase the topic. Remember to not rewrite it, okay? Then, always explain the ideas. Remember, it is not enough to just enumerate the advantages or disadvantages. You should always explain them and support with relevant ideas. Please check that your ideas are relevant and you do not get sidetracked. Then, uh, when you write a concluding paragraph, please do not include any new information. When it comes to timing, uh, I would um, recommend that you do not set yourself very strict limits when you are just getting prepared for your IELTS and you have some time in advance. Yeah, For example, your uh, exam is in three months or your exam is in half a year, then you obviously have some time to spare and some time to spend getting prepared. So um, when the time is close to the exam and you have just a few weeks left, uh, of course, it is a wider decision for you to start and limit yourself. So why I suggest that you do not limit yourself from the very beginning is because usually when students start writing essays, they know pretty little about them. They make a lot of mistakes. They need well, they need to study a lot, starting with the structure, with identifying the essay, and finishing with the punctuation. So it means that obviously while you're writing your essay at home, you need more time, more time to analyze, more time to follow the strategies more time to stick to uh, the structure, yeah? You need to spend some time analyzing what you are doing. And it might definitely take you more time. It's absolutely not a problem uh, because you are just studying, yeah? Then, uh, when you send your essays to the teachers and they check your essays and you see some mistakes in them, especially if you have many mistakes in your essays, or if you see that the mistakes that you make are repetitive, you keep making the same mistakes over and over again, I would recommend that you rewrite your essays. Yeah? So you receive the essay from your teacher, which is checked, and now it has absolutely no mistakes. So please rewrite the essay in such a way you may, um, well, it, it may be beneficial as you may remember what kind of mistakes you have done and how you can avoid making them. Then, of course, the better and more accurate your language is, the higher band you get, which means that you should always remember about the vocabulary and grammar that you use. Yeah, make it as varied as possible. And uh, the last advice I would give you is to practice, practice, and once again practice, because only practice makes perfect. I know how difficult it is to write essays. I know that lots of students procrastinate when it comes to writing essays. However, procrastination won't do you any good. So if you want if you are aiming at some high score, if you want to perfect your knowledge and your skills, you should make yourself write, write, and write, okay? And uh, then we are always ready to help you, to help you learn different types of essays. We are ready to help you learn how to write them, what strategies to follow, to share all the knowledge we have with you so that you could polish off your writing skills. Okay, so, but it's not only about writing. Our school has a number of different programs which would cater to everybody's tastes and everybody's needs. So if you are willing to uh, take arms and if you are willing to pass it with flying colors, we are looking forward to meeting with you and having lessons with you. Thank you a lot for spending this time with me. I hope that this information was beneficial to you and you will be able to make the most out of it. Thank you once again. Have a great weekend and see you in the lessons. Goodbye.